Ladies and gentlemen, I have to say it. We got to start this video out by saying it. This is your spoiler warning. If you have not played the Modern Warfare 3 campaign and you do not want it to be spoiled for you, if you don't want to know what happens, because you're going to play it later, do not watch this video yet. I guarantee you, after you play the campaign, you're going to want to watch this video. But if you have played it, this is for you. If you've watched it, if you know what happens and you are confused, I will answer all of your questions today because Modern Warfare 3's ending is confusing. It's one of the most confusing endings to a Call of Duty game that I have seen so far. So what we are going to do is break it down plain and simple so you know exactly what happens at the end of Modern Warfare 3. So that is your spoiler warning. Now let's get into it. As far as the ending of Modern Warfare 3 goes, there is two things that happen that are a little bit confusing. The first of which is the death of Soap McTavish. Red wire, got it. Take us to hell with you, Captain. Never bury your enemies alive. Now, why this happens and why Makarov just runs off into the sunset after it does is very confusing and to understand that we have to go through the story of modern warfare 3 but that's not the only thing that happens at the end of modern warfare 3 because in the post credit scenes this is what happens oh i am not gonna beg for my life not from you or anybody else captain wouldn't do you any good Now, what's weird about this is that Captain Price isn't the kind of soldier to just go in guns a-blazing and literally assassinate a member of the government. It's just not his thing. It's completely breaking his character. But I will tell you now that throughout the story of Modern Warfare 3, it is explained why he does it, and it is probably not what you think. So for me to fully explain the ending, we have to start at the beginning actually we have to start four years before the beginning because the earliest thing that we have within the modern warfare 3 campaign is actually in the city of verdance but before the war started there there's a bustling city and at verdance stadium there's an attack going on being carried out by none other than vladimir makarov and at this point the good guys go in by the way, if we go back to the end of Modern Warfare 2, remember that scene in the bar where Kate Laswell pulls out the picture and everyone recognizes of Vladimir Makarov? Well, the reasoning for that is because they have seen him before in Verdansk. When they move in and go in and capture him, we find out that he is none other than the one responsible for the initial attack on Verdansk. But the good guys, Task Force 141, bring Makarov into custody. But that's not before Makarov can make one last comment. Your fucking brains are through if you hear me. I swear to God, I'll do it. Do it, come on. You shut your mouth. Let me finish him. <laughs> John, we have him. He's in custody. He's not going anywhere. Stand down, Sergeant. I thought you were the good guys. You're gonna rot in hell for this. You'll die in the gulag with the rest of the Russian rats. I'll be seeing you again, McTavish. I promise. And this decision for Soap to not pull the trigger would be the decision that would change the outcome four years later. Because in four years' time, in the Russian gulag, Kony ultranationalists move in on the prison to rescue Vladimir Makarov. And after this, things start to go wild. The Russians move in on Yurzikstan, invading the area, and Makarov's next move is to go into a facility and steal a whole bunch of sarin gas. After this, we have a conversation between Captain Price and Fair Karim, where we get to hear a little bit more backstory on how the American government was supporting the Yurzikstan Liberation Forces in their fight against Al Qatala and Barkov's forces. Russia's back in Azerbaijan. Contractors. The Kony Group pulled a stash of chemicals from up north yesterday. Stole my missiles at sunrise. All less than 24 hours after Vladimir Makarov walked himself out of a prison. Works quickly. 
Well, he's making up for lost time, isn't he? Let's move. Who sent you the missiles? Shadow Company. Shadow Company don't have that kind of firepower. They're errand boys with tack vests. They're allies. They carried out a hit on my men. Commander Graves did this. Yeah, well, he had his orders, yeah. From who? General Shepard. Did Shepard send you those missiles? My weapons are my business. He's a very dangerous man, Farah. We are all dangerous, Captain. Now, this little conversation is one of the most important things in the entire campaign, because what we find out here is that Shadow Company the entire time was working with Yurzikstan and working with the Liberation Forces. They're sending them missiles. This explains two things. Number one, why those three missiles that got stolen in Modern Warfare 2 were there in the first place. It's because Shepard and Shadow Company were trying to support them. It also explains why in the Modern Warfare 2 seasons, Farah and Alex, who were in Yurzikstan the entire time, were so ready to fight alongside Shadow Company and Commander Philip Graves. They never actually knew that they betrayed Task Force 141, Captain Price, Soap, Ghost, or anyone else. They did and still do see Shadow Company as allies. Now, Makarov's next move is twofold. The first thing is to take that Sarian gas that he got, put it in Yurzikstan missiles that Shadow Company gave them, and fire them, making it look like this attack was carried out by Yurzikstan. The second thing was an attack on an airplane carried out by a Yurzikstan Liberation Force ex-military officer, again, making it look like Yurzikstan planned these attacks. Now, for the next little while in the campaign, you end up thwarting Makarov's attacks, stopping his attempt to frame Yurzikstan, capturing his right-hand man, slowly gathering information on him, and eventually, you find out about a prisoner being transported in Siberia. So you go there to find out who the prisoner is and see if Makarov is there along the way. When you find out who the prisoner is, there's a big surprise. <laughs> Tavish. What the fuck? Captain? Fuck, oh, he's there! A single shit show that you are not a part of! Ghost, you seeing this? In my side. Let's smoke him and call it a day. Six, who do you have? Gold fucking eagle, actually. Shepard? And the cold flesh. Holy shit. Cap, we're sitting ducks out here. Then let's move him. Why are you here? They're hunting us, John. They found me first. What did you trade for your life? Not a goddamn thing. Bollocks. I'm a four-star United States general. And they kept you alive. Let's toss this fucker back in the lake. I know Makarov's next target. Now, I want to be really clear here. From everything that I have gathered and everything that I have found, it doesn't appear as though Shepard was working with Makarov whatsoever, but rather he was hunting him, trying to track him down and stop him in his tracks, really for fame and glory and to have his name in the record book. And by the end of the mission, Task Force 141 ends up striking a deal with Shepard. Shepard has to go in front of Congress and tell the truth about everything that he did alongside his lapdog, AKA Commander Philip Graves. But as it turns out, they end up turning against each other. Quiet, quiet, please. General Shepard, in October of 2022, did you authorize Shadow Company to fire on a task force under your command in Las Amas, Mexico? No, I did not. Mr. Graves? Were you given orders to use lethal force against TF-141? Yes, I was. Quiet, quiet in this chamber. Who gave you those orders? General Herschel Shepard. Did you act on those orders, Mr. Graves? No, absolutely not, sir. Quiet, quiet. So they both end up lying in front of Congress, throwing each other under the bus just to save their own butts. And essentially, this is the last straw for Task Force 141. They know they have to stop Makarov, and they're very, very mad at General Shepard. However, with the intel that was given to them by General Shepard, they are able to track down Makarov to London and eventually find out he's doing something with the trains. And as it turns out, he has planted a bomb in the train station. So they go in, go to defuse the bomb, 
And that is when this happened. Red wire, got it. Take us to hell with you, Captain. Never bury your enemies alive. So from the campaign, we know that Makarov is a character that plans everything well in advance. And it appears as though this attack wasn't actually planned just to blow up the trains, but rather to get back at Soap. But why, you may ask, it is all back from Verdansk. When he was captured, he swore he would get revenge on Soap, just like we saw before. And this was him doing so. And then he runs off into the distance. And as we heard Makarov say... I'll be seeing you again, McTavish. I promise. But as Makarov said to Price at the very end, never bury your enemies alive. In other words, take no prisoners. And this would be something that sticks in his head because if he thinks back to Verdansk, if he would have just let Soap take care of Makarov, none of this would have ever happened and Soap would still be alive. So he feels responsible and... Then he takes the advice of Makarov, taking no prisoners, not burying his enemies alive. So then he goes to his next enemy, General Shepard. You're better than this, Captain. Mm. We both will. This job is about making sacrifices for the greater good. Agreed. You got a body count of your own, John. It'll come back to haunt you. Oh, I am not gonna beg for my life. Not from you or anybody else, Captain. Wouldn't do you any good. So why show this at the very end of the campaign? That is the question. And I believe it's to show that Captain Price has changed. We see a darker side of him. Makarov coming into the picture and taking out Soap has made him rethink the way that he does things. And taking no prisoners is going to be his new way of life. Really, if we look at Modern Warfare 3 as a whole, that is kind of the motif beginning to end. We see at the very beginning a prisoner being released, that being Makarov. And prisoners cannot be trusted. So now a darker form of Captain Price has taken place. Really, we are looking at an origin story, an origin story of how Makarov has escaped and is now plotting a bigger plan, a plan to start World War III. And Captain Price is now in a darker place of his life, swearing revenge and to take no prisoners with Vladimir Makarov. Really, this campaign was just to set up the next part of the story, a deeper dive into Vladimir Makarov versus Captain Price. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the ending explained of the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. Hopefully I could fill in some blanks for you, answer some questions. And if I did, I would love it if you could hit that like button. It shows me that you wanna see more story videos like this one. I have a lot of them planned, but the more likes these video gets, the more likely I am to put out those story videos sooner and sooner. So if you wanna see more like this, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, Peace out. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we're made.